Okay, um, today I would like to talk about uh, anti-ransomware si simulation. And uh, just for those who missed our previous um, reports, um, so I will briefly uh, tell what we, what we have presented in the previous episodes. So uh, we started um, anti-ransomware testing using the simulation approach. So we, uh, in April 2017, this was our first test and we created a Python script uh, to simulate uh, 18 uh, tests that uh, mimic uh, ransomware behavior. And this is how, it, how our ransomware simulation solution uh, looks like. So we have a tool on the left uh, where we can specify like the, the target folder that we are, we are going to attack, encrypt files there. As you can see, we have uh, like a bunch of files, uh, like typically documents, uh, videos, uh, pictures. Then we can uh, set up the okay, encryption method, uh, encoding, uh, even cry crypto library, and um, actually run run the encryption we can encrypt uh files one by one or just um, all of them and we can also have uh, like a um, ransomware detector in uh, running in console so uh you can see that uh, after like um, 10 files for example uh have been encrypted our ransomware detector uh pop up the alert that uh, the, uh, the ransomware activity is detected so that that was our uh, like a status before. Then we uh, switched to um, actually AI powered solutions. So we decided, okay, we have a, a ransomware simulation solution, and uh, what if we try to apply uh, machine learning, in particular reinforcement learning, to uh, make it more intelligent, and uh, so our uh, ransomware simulator uh, could be run in uh, in more intelligent way to uh, and be able to run the attack in uh, using the optimal uh, attack strategy. And yeah, this is what you can see is uh, just uh, uh, regular uh, training um, model for reinforcement learning, uh, where we have uh, the agent uh, which uh, actually um, take the action. And here we should have our ransomware simulator and our agent uh, actually configures our ransomware simulator to perform some action for example encrypt one or two files or three files uh, using different um, you know uh, methods then we have uh, like uh, our operating system where we have files um, as you can see in the folder and uh, after performing the action so we can evaluate the state of the environment and uh, figure out okay uh, if we manage to encrypt uh, the desired number of uh, files then we got the reward some score for example from 0 to 10 uh, and then we switch to, uh, to, uh, to to another state and in such way like an iterative uh, way we can find out okay uh, which action lead to success and which actions uh, they are they are actually lead to fail to failure and um, in a long perspective after like a playing uh, like almost uh, 600 games or performing 600 iterations we can see that uh, we have a learning progress which means uh, in the very beginning our um, ransomware uh, simulator our intelligent agent uh, could actually win uh, zero out of 10 games which means uh, it tries to encrypt files in the folder but failed because ransomware detector detected this activity as uh, as suspicious based on uh, behavior of of uh, the ransomware simulator but um, you know after like uh, 580 iterations we can see that uh, 10 out of 10 uh, attempts uh, were successful, which means uh, actually 100% rate. So we can see that the, this, this is a learning curve in our case. And as a result, for example, we used a Q-learning uh, algorithm to, to train our intelligent engine to run ransomware simulator. We have uh, uh, discovered the optimal strategy to run ransomware attack. So we have for example, state zero in this state, we choose some action uh, 14, number 14. Then we go to another state, which means like we encrypted, for example, five files. We go to this state where we have five files encrypted. Then we have 
uh, encrypt two files more, we jump to this state, state number seven, then encrypt one more file, one more, and finally, like all files in the folder are encrypted. And this is a threshold uh, mark in red. This is a uh, setup of our ransomware detector. So our ransomware detector would uh, block ransomware simulator if it sees uh, eight anomalies in the row. And then you can play like uh, with timing, with uh, you know uh, different attributes of ransomware attack, like adding double extension, not adding applying base64 for encrypted uh, data, and so on stuff. Okay, finally, uh, we came to uh, attack, uh, to simulation of the attacks on uh, cloud services, in particular file and mail services. And here we have uh, actually two, uh, two ways how, how ransomware attack can, can be executed against such services. Uh, the first way is actually uh, when you uh, have, for example, a Google Drive or OneDrive account, uh, you install um, a synchronization service or, or synchronization tool. And then once you, for example, modify your files on your local computer in your local folder, they will be um, immediately synced to the uh, cloud. Um, so I'm just going to show have video. This is an example of a wasted locker attack that I presented on VB conference last year. So um, on the right, you can see uh, this is a local folder on, on the uh, victim's uh, computer that is synced with uh, Google Drive folder, which is my, my corporate account. And then I write, uh, run Wasted Locker. As you can see, the files uh, in my local folder have been encrypted. And then after a while, uh, those encrypted files, they are synced, they are uploaded to the uh, Google Drive. So this is uh, like a possible attack scenario that we actually uh, can see uh, just running regular ransomware. Uh, this ransomware doesn't need to be uh, doesn't need to have access to the cloud services, but just uh, it needs to be run on local computer, encrypt files on local computer, and then the files automatically will be synced to the cloud. Then uh, the second attack vector is uh, uh, OAuth abuse. So this is um, OAuth, uh, it's a, a access token that can be granted once you um, pass the uh, authorization process, authentication uh, authorization process. Um, you can get, or your application can get access to uh, some services, to some resources in the cloud. For example, you can see this is a, uh, this is a window that represents fake H&M uh, shopping applications that was used by the uh, attackers in the beginning of 2020. Uh, they targeted, this is the, this is an actor uh, with a identifier TA2552, like, I don't know who, who is that, but they, they, they targeted uh, Spanish speaking targets. Uh, and they came uh, as a lure um, shopping application. And then they requested, as you can see, they requested uh, so-called scopes. So this, this is, in other words, permissions that will uh, give access, for example, to um, to a user profile, uh, read user contacts, read user mail. So th this is a, um, based on the scopes requested, uh, the goal of the attackers was a cyber espionage, just to track uh, the information about the victim. Actually, all auth abuse is not new. Uh, it, it didn't appear in 2020, but uh, it first, uh, it, uh, first it was known to use by uh, APT, by Russian, state-sponsored uh, group APT28 uh, in the attack against uh, US elections. So they use uh, this uh, like a spear phishing attack that um, ended up uh, with OAuth access token abuse. So we decided to perform the simulation, uh, the attack simulation on uh, Google Workspace and on uh, Office 365, probably the most popular uh, SaaS, uh, corporate SaaS solutions. And of course, I recorded 
uh, several videos showing how this attack can be executed. So we developed the dashboard. Uh, in this dashboard, first the attacker needs to sign in. Uh, so uh, the attackers can use, uh, for example, uh, suppliers, uh, compromised suppliers account, for example, to run the attack. And this account is used to send phishing email. So we enter the victim's email and send the phishing, spare phishing email. As you can see, a uh, victim receives this email, click on the uh, bait. And as you can see, um, uh, the user was suggested to install so-called G security application and give uh, permissions to access uh, Gmail. Then the attacker having this access token provided, uh, attacker can actually view emails and uh, upload files. For example, for our test, we can uh, create the folder with files, with test files. We will see it now. So you can see uh, in the mailbox we have uh, we, we generated a lot of test messages. Actually, we can start uh, ransom attack on existing um, mails in in the mailbox. But just for safety reason and for simplicity, we upload the test messages and then um, actually yeah we can view them if it's if the point is cyber espionage uh, or data exfiltration. So we can run uh, run uh, view emails or we can actually encrypt the data and start a uh, ransomware payload. And again, switching to victim's uh, mailbox in Gmail, we will see that actually, yes, all the all the messages have been encrypted. And unfortunately, uh, there is no way like, uh, you know, to get this uh, mails back uh, using uh, Gmail, Google's services. So that's it. Then I have uh, another example. It's attack on Google Drive. Again, we have a hacker dashboard. We sign in to uh, the account that will be used as a jumping off uh, ground in our targeted attack. We enter victim's email to send sufficient spare uh, mail to uh, use the user to click on the link and install some, you know, unknown application. Again, we have this G security application and here user uh, gives a consent to, uh, to uh, give access to the Google Drive. Then again, we can uh, view the content of the Google Drive. Uh, for test purposes, we upload the test files. Uh, you can see them uh, in the test folder right now. Just document it. can be any files that you set up uh, for this simulation. As you can see, we have like a different uh, styles of behavior for our ransomware simulator. So we can run it as a WannaCry, as a Revel ransomware. Actually, it's it's not limited. Uh, it, it's it's limited only by your uh, fantasy. And then, as you can see. Yeah, this is this is the original file. You can see it's uh, we, we can read them and then we can uh, actually start the attack. In our case, this is a simulation of rebel ransomware behavior. In this case, our ransomware uh, directly uh, connects, actually uh, uh, the simulator directly connects to Google Drive account and encrypts file uh, in the way how, rent, how rebel ransomware would encrypt it on, on local computer. So uh, I do not tell that uh, the Revel can actually attack Google Drive. This is just a simulation of the behavior if Revel would be able to, to access Google Drive and encrypt files uh, on Google Drive. So finally, you can see um, the files, the majority of files have been encrypted. So the encryption is still in progress. And 
and we also put a ransom note just to be more authentic. And yes, the content is not available in this case. Uh, one more demo for Outlook, attack on Outlook. Yeah, we, we start in a regular way with the hacker's dashboard. We sign in to uh, jumping off account in Office 365. And uh, currently uh, the attacker uh, gets the permission to control the um, this uh, jumping off account to, to be able to send email, uh, phishing emails per phishing email to the victim. Uh, then we go to victim's account and to sign in. So here you can see it's uh, the, the inbox is empty currently. It's a test account, which we are going to attack right now. So first, uh, as usual, we uh, send phishing email with a uh, proposition to install some uh, security application, so-called. Then the victim needs to provide the credentials in order um, to authenticate itself, and then uh, the uh, malicious uh, cloud application will ask to provide permission. You can see them on the screen right now. So this is a full permission uh, to Outlook. So the attackers will be able to perform any action, uh, viewing the mails again, modifying, uploading. So again, uh, for test purposes, we upload um, the test messages to the inbox folder. And the next step, we will uh, test our ransomware payload. Yes, and you, as you can see, it's again, has been successfully encrypted in Outlook. And the last one is attack on OneDrive. So the scenario is the same. Um, the uh, attackers sign to the outlook to the Office 365 account to be able to send the phishing mail, and then we perform the same operations here. Currently, the, the inbox is empty. As you can see, but the fish in the mail is coming. So we in in these demos we use uh, like a fishing um, fish in the mail as probably that's the most popular and the only known way uh, how to compromise. Uh, uh, the cloud services. So, of course, uh, if if there will be uh, any possibility to exploit zero-day vulnerability and uh, get direct access to this, but uh, so far we don't know about the, uh, about any of such, and uh, therefore we use the most common uh, way to attack uh, the cloud environments is uh, to run through spearfishing attack. So we upload test files again to OneDrive, and then we'll be able to choose uh, the ransomware type for simulation. So in this case, we again, we choose uh, Rebel ransomware style of file encryption. And finally, yes, we have, have the file encryption. So uh, the idea of uh, this demo is uh, to test um, uh, the um, anti-malware, anti-ransomware capability if you have such in the product that uh, protects uh, cloud environment, cloud services against ransomware attack. Uh, I, I already mentioned two ways how the cloud services can be compromised. Uh, 
one is uh, using uh, syncing services and another uh, all auth abuse scenario. So uh, that's it for today. And uh, just to sum up uh, today's uh, presentation. So currently we work uh, individually with the security vendors uh, to, to test their solutions. So we do not plan to run uh, public comparative testing at the moment uh, because uh, we see uh, some complexity um, in this in, in this type of activity uh, for example if we talk about uh, using ai or reinforcement learning to train the uh, simulation software to uh, to uh, simulate the attack uh, in this case um, reinforcement learning implies um, randomness during the uh, training procedure uh, the, the the training life cycle the training cycle is split into exploration exploitation part and during the exploration part we uh, select the actions randomly which means like we cannot test uh, two uh, products uh, under the same conditions because the uh, agent will be trained uh, using uh, different inputs and uh, may, may end up uh, with different testing strategies so we uh, like uh, simulation um, approach as, as this particular presentation is titled we also apply machine learning to make it more intelligent and to find uh, sometimes to uh, find the optimal attack strategy sometimes to find the uh, optimal thresholds that, that we we can um, bypass and um, so we uh, run simulation for endpoints and for cloud services uh, however, uh, simulation, uh, of course, you may say like a simulation is not real attack. And uh, in addition to that, we also, uh, of course, run like uh, real cases of ransomware attacks to test the products in addition to, to simulation. Uh, because we don't have like a, uh, currently um, in the wild, uh, real in the wild attacks of ransomware on cloud services. So we use uh, simulation to like to look into the future and trying to uh, predict such uh, potential attacks in the future. Uh, thank you for attentions. If you have any questions, 